I'm in Internet Information Services on a Windows 2019 standard server. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign a self-signed certificate into a default website. And then I'm going to go into Group Policy and trust that certificate. So that way we don't get a certificate warning or error. I'm in the server at the top left. So what now what I'm going to do is click on server certificates. Double click. And we're going to click on create a self-signed certificate. Now the name of the server is DC1 and the Active Directory domain is techpub.us. So I'll just call it that. And I'm going to leave the certificate set to personal. And you can choose personal or web hosting. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. This has nothing to do with IIS. It has to do with the store where the certificate is held. So I'll click OK. And now I've got my certificate. Now I've got two different uh, certificates that are set to ca called DC1. This first one is a domain certificate. The second one is going to be the website hosting certificate that we're going to be using. And you can tell because the issued by is the DC1-CA, Certificate Authority. So we can ignore that one. Now we're going to go into where it says Default Website, and we're going to choose Bindings. Now what this does is it links that certificate to the website itself. So we already have this HTTP port 80, which is bound, but that's not a secure link. So for instance, if I go into my web browser and I type in HTTP colon slash slash DC1, which is the name of the server, then it comes up with the default page, which is great, but it's showing me that there's no uh, SSL certificate here. So it's not a secure connection. So what I want to do is I want to have a secure connection. So I can do that by clicking add and change my type from HTTP to HTTPS. Now under IP address, we can just leave that the way it is. And the port changed from 80 to 443, so that's good also. And we're going to put in the name of dc1.techpub.us. The other boxes that you see here, you can just leave unchecked. I'm going to click on the SSL certificate, and I've got two different certificates. I think it's this one here that's lowercase because that's the one I did earlier. But just to make sure, I'll click on View. And sure enough, it's today's date, so I know that we're OK. Now I'm going to click OK here and click Close. And just to confirm that it's working, I'm going to go back in and type HTTPS for the SSL certificate, dc1.techpub.us. Hit Enter. And we see now we're getting a warning. So I'll click Advanced and click Accept the Risk. And now it's come up. So what this has done is it's just basically told us that, yes, the website's going to work, but your certificate is not being trusted. So if I click on this little drop down here, it says connection not secure. I click more information and it says basically this is a self-signed certificate. It's not a public certificate. Now we're going to do a public certificate in an upcoming video in this playlist. So take a look for that if you need to get a public certificate. But the self-signed certificate is nice because it's free. So we're going to go to, on the domain controller, we're going to go to Server Manager, and then Tools, and Group Policy Management. So we need to basically create a group policy that will trust this certificate. So we need to find and export the certificate first. So I'm going to go down to the Start menu and choose Run and type in MMC, which stands for Microsoft Management Console. Click OK. And now the MMC pops up. I need to add a snap-in for certificates. So find certificates in the list. Click Add. And choose the user account. Click Finish. And OK. Now we're going to expand the certificates and go to where it says Trusted Root Certification Authorities and Certificates. And we should see a dc1.techpub.us with today's date on it, which we do. So this is the correct certificate. I need to export that. So I'm going to right click on that, choose All Tasks and Export. A new wizard pops up. I can choose either to export the private key or not. There's no need to export the private key for this case, so I'll just choose not to. It's going to create a CER.CER .CER certificate file, which is fine. 
Now I've got to give it a file name. I'm going to uh, put this onto the desktop so it's easy to find. dc1.techpub.us, just so I know what it is. And next, and finish. Now my certificate should be on the desktop. And there's my certificate. Great. Now I can choose to trust the certificate in group policy. Next, we need to create a shared folder location for our certificate. So I'm going to go into the C drive and I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it shared cert. And I'm going to move that certificate into that location. Now I need to share that folder by right clicking and going to properties and going into the sharing tab. We'll click advanced sharing, share this folder, permissions, and we're going to add domain users. And we're going to leave it at read, which is fine. We're going to remove everyone because we only want domain users to have this. We don't want people outside of the domain who can log in anonymously to be able to have access to this. So we're going to want to do the same thing on the security tab by clicking and choosing domain users. And the default rights are fine. They don't need to have the ability to delete the file or move the file, just have read only. Just to confirm it's working, we'll do a backslash backslash DC1. And there's our shared cert and the certificates inside. So we're good there. Now we're going to go back into Server Manager, go to Tools, and go to Group Policy Management. And in Group Policy Management, we're going to create a brand new group policy object by right-clicking on the domain and choose Create a GPO in this domain and link it here. Now the reason we're putting it at the root is so it affects all computers in the domain. It's only going to affect computers in the domain, so if you're going to be doing this on mobile devices uh, that are not members of the domain, you'll want to do a public certificate instead, which we'll do in that other video. I'm going to call this Trust Self-Signed and click OK, but you can call it anything you want. And now I'm going to right click and choose Edit. And inside edit, I'm going to expand policies and I'm going to expand Windows settings, security settings, then public key policies, and then trusted root certification authorities. Now I'm going to right click anywhere on the right hand side, choose import, click next. And we need to use that path to the file. So I'm going to put in backslash backslash DC1. You can't use C colon backslash because the users can't get to that. You have to use the path to the file, which is called a UNC path. Then we'll see the shared cert. Double click on that. And there's our DC1 certificate. Double click on that. Click next. Leave it in the trusted root certification authorities. Click next and finish. Now you need to restart a Windows client or any other computer that's going to be connecting to this website in order to have the group policy get affected to the computer. If it's a user policy, then you just have to type in GP update or log off and log back in. But a computer policy requires that we restart the computer so it can receive that certificate. I'm logging into the Windows 10 client, and you'll notice it's a virtual server, virtual machine. And you can do this either on a virtual machine or on a physical machine. It does not matter. And that can be both the client as well as the server. They'll be affected in the same way. We're logged all the way in. I'm going to open up web browser. I'm going to type in HTTPS colon slash slash DC1.techpub.us. Hit enter. And look at that, no more certificate warnings. Now, if we go in and use Firefox, it's going to look a little different. So once again, HTTPS colon slash slash DC1.techpub.us. 
All right, so the good news is we did not get the warning page that required us to click to continue. However, we do get a little bit of a warning triangle here at the top. It says connection is not secure. And that's because Firefox does things a little bit differently than Chrome or Internet Explorer or Edge and some other web browsers. And that is because it, under the owner, it says the website does not supply ownership information. So it's not saying that the... Uh, website is going to cause any kind of a security uh, issue except for the fact that it doesn't supply the ownership information. So it's sort of a mild warning. It's not the same as what it gave us before, which was a big warning page that we had to click OK. We agree to the risks to move on. Uh, so that's all right. And um, you can use Chrome if you don't want to see that. But uh, and other web browsers as well. But Firefox does things a little differently. So that is how we set up a certificate in IIS and we bind it and then we trust it using a group policy.